hello, hello. Welcome to Talent Matters, the recruiting podcast of dreams. I've used that one before, not used it for a while, so I thought we'd, uh, we'd uh, drag that one back out of the uh, out of the cupboard. Talent Matters is, I think, the hundred and twenty first most popular recruitment podcast with the name Talent in the title. So anyone that's new uh, listening or watching, you guys are in for an absolute treat, I promise you. I'm only saved, only saved by the quality of the guests that I have on. Um, and today is no different. Although tempting to say today is the exception, but Simon, I wouldn't be that, um, that rude or offensive um, certainly not to the MD of Reed. So and that's who we have on today. Simon, how are you doing? Yeah, very well. Very well. Thank you. How are you? I am good. I'm good. Pouring with rain though. So still waiting for the sun. Uh, but, uh, we, we, we will continue that, that way. I'm sure, uh, we'll probably get a couple of days. It'll be blistering hot and then we'll all be complaining. It's too hot to sleep. So, uh, we're never happy, are we? And, but of course, if, uh, Reed not being happy, uh, infamous for uh, for Love Mondays, uh, which uh, you, viewers and, and listeners might have seen on TV and, and radio over the years or billboards over the years because you've, you've been pretty good. I happen to love Mondays, um, which is which is good. Do you love Mondays? Uh, I do. Yeah, I do. Uh, we have a we have a fast start to our Mondays at read.co.uk. We have an early early morning meeting to get us going for the week. So um, so yeah, it, it, it gets us. Gets us up and ready for the week, that's for sure. What time's early? Uh, 8.15 is our, our first meeting on a Monday morning, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, do, I, do, I, do, I do love Mondays for sure. Full disclosure, an 8.15 meeting sounds dreadful to me. So uh, I don't do that. Um, that's probably why I love Mondays. But you clearly love it, so that's good. That's good for you. But uh, Well, it's always on, always on brand. <laughs> Good, good. So anyway, welcome. Um, thank you very much for, for coming on. Um, it's going to be a good one, I'm sure. We're going to talk about uh, job board, talk about read. Um, and of course, one of the things that you guys have, um, I think it's recently introduced, but you can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, but uh, that's a, a performance option on, uh, on read. And, and for those of you who um, haven't watched the previous podcast where we've gone through performance, programmatic, and uh, all the, the kind of different ways you can advertise on job boards. Performance, a performance model is where you pay for each click or um, for each um, view or hire for each of the job ads that you put out. And the other version of a duration or a tenure or the old fashioned way, however you want to do it, um, is where you simply put an ad out on a job board um, and sit back and hope um, that you get a lot of response and good response for it. Um, and Reed has been typically or previously in the in the duration side of uh, side of things, but of course there's a lot of providers out there that are now um, performance led, uh, and you guys have introduced a a, a a model or an option to do that. So tell us, is that has that gone well? Uh, yeah, so it, it, it's like it's um yeah I think that's a, a very good representation of where we're at. So we've obviously like all businesses like ours in this market for the last few years have had lots of conversations with customers who have been looking to potentially change the way that they that they purchase. Um, so probably maybe three or four years ago we had the first proper really good kind of uh, robust conversations about this mo with, about this model with customers. Um, but in the last 12 months, it's something where we've really focused much more on delivering a performance-based proposition to customers in this market. Um, we're not, you know, we haven't moved all of our customers over to it and we probably won't move all of our customers over to it, but there's certainly a segment of the market that have actively or proactively been asking us for a proposition of this nature for some time. So, so yeah, we, 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 we're investing time and energy to build a new proposition which i guess satisfies the requirements of customers who want to buy in a different way and how long has this been how long have you had this for this how long has it been live if you like yeah so i guess in earnest we've had it variations of this for probably the last couple of years 
Uh, but it's really in the last 12 months where we've really focused much more around, um, I guess, educating customers a bit more on what the proposition is, proactively developing a service which customers can self-serve. So we've recently launched a, a campaign management product that customers who want to self-serve on a performance basis that they can do that. Obviously, we have customer success teams and account managers internally who can who can help many of our customers to advertise in a performance way. But yeah, I guess our our focus has really uh, increased in the last twelve months on this. And most of our um, listeners or viewers, I really should decide whether or not people listen or they view. Um, but most of them will be um, recruitment businesses um, and most of our experience or, or my experience with wave is 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 through recruitment um consultancies and, and businesses and they've been fairly slow to adopt this kind of um this type of model still preferring the the duration side side of things so is this something that's going to impact them i mean is there um an option or is it um something that is just going to start to be the norm do you think yeah really good question so the primary customer group who have been buying this service um are direct employers largely are enterprise size direct employers and i think they've been the first to move in this market if we look about historically even in the us and then obviously over over here enterprise size directs are the ones who who move down that move down that path most readily um, and that's certainly how we've seen it in terms of appetite from customers to use this model. And I think it's important to say this isn't something that we are forcing on customers. Customer, we are we are we are offering it to customers where it is appropriate. And certainly, I say large direct employers are the ones that are, that show have shown the most willingness or eagerness to rather to, to take this up. The recruitment agency side of the market is quite different in the sense that we the majority of our our customer base from a numerically our 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 recruitment agencies certainly the ones who have uh, who work with us on an ongoing basis and they largely buy on a, on a tenancy basis for advertising we obviously have cv database access typically alongside that and that market you're absolutely right haven't moved particularly quickly down the performance route and the majority of those do still do still tend to buy so this combination package of job ads on a duration base and and database we are seeing some recruitment agencies for sure show an interest in this uh, we've got a number of our larger recruitment agency customers who might have a kind of main contract which is a duration based postings alongside a database uh, proposition and then for a particular campaign that they win or a particular new customer that wants to buy in this in this way they might have campaign by campaign buying them uh, performance-based advertising on top of it but um but yeah it is certainly not the preeminent model for recruitment agencies and i would question whether it will ever be the preeminent model for recruitment agencies or certainly for the foreseeable future anyway yeah it's it's interesting isn't it because i think with when you have a single kind of almost like a single point to send candidates to like a career site um i can see why some of the the, the enterprise businesses would would want to do that because it's almost almost becomes like a marketing exercise where you just drive candidates to that um to that end point i think where the challenge has been with um, recruitment agencies is typically you have uh, recruitment agencies made up of individual consultants within it and they will have their own quota of of um of of ads that they can post out and i think when you start trying to break things down like that and then assign that to a, a like a budget like a monthly budget um it gets quite it gets quite tricky to make sure that everyone's got a fair kind of crack of the crack of the whip um so you know do you do you have any thoughts on how that might could change for recruitment you know with that model in mind is performance based advertising ever going to be something that could be used for almost individual consultant by individual consultant do you think yeah i think there's a couple of i think that's a very clear challenge i think within that market in terms of recruitment agencies buying that model i think there are a couple of others as well i think it's, there's no doubt that actually for many of the recruitment agency customers that we deal with they will have a fixed recruitment marketing budget which 
for the year. And actually what a, a tendency based model allows them to do is to understand, particularly if they're, if they were experienced in the market, they've been doing this for a long time, they will know roughly how many job postings they will need to buy for the course of the course of the year. And the tendency based model works because they understand the economics of it up front. They understand what their, I guess, maximum exposure is based on the number of jobs that they buy. And I guess for then it, from a, from a budgeting standpoint, buying duration based postings because of those reasons makes a lot of sense. So I think that's probably one reason why, um, continue on the path that those organizations are already on um is is a really you know makes sense but also as you said just said it becomes more challenging when you are if you're a a, a, a large scale recruitment agency and you've got hundreds or potentially thousands of, of consultants who um utilize that centralized contract um then yeah absolutely i think a duration-based posting model makes a lot of sense there i think there's probably some ways that, that it might it might change over time. I guess it might be the opportunity to buy um, a performance-based model with almost like a maximum budget per job or a maximum budget per campaign. You can then distribute that out among consultants in that way. That takes quite a lot of work up front. And I think probably there's um, uh, maybe not the maturity in the market to do that at scale right, right at this time, but that's probably the answer to it. If you, if rather than buying a job posting for, 10 pounds, for example, per consultant, it might be that you have a maximum budget for that job from a performance basis of 10 pounds. And obviously that becomes the maximum budget because if you don't get the requisite number of applications, then you'll pay less than that 10 pounds potentially. So I guess that, that, that might be a way that we see things move in that market. You know, I think that's one of the, you know, the budget thing that you just mentioned there, I think is one of the key challenges that when we've done this in the past and looked at it, you know, you've got recruitment agencies buying um, adverts, albeit it's going up, but, you know, anywhere from now and probably 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 pounds an ad on some job boards. Um, and when you then try and, and, and that could, that would generate five, 10, 20 applications the cost per application on that basis is really low. Uh, and when you start looking at performance stuff and you sort of, you know, you talk to the, the, you know, the providers and you go, well, it's 10 pound, a, you know, a, a maximum that I want to spend on it. And I expect to get about 10, 15 applications that, you know, there's the jaw falls on the floor and, you know, we're like, well, we can't do that, you know? So how, as the MD of Reed, you may not want to disclose these secrets, but how do you actually, on a on a tenure basis, generate that amount of applications for a very small, you know, relatively small investment per job? You know, if you pay, how is it that a fifteen pound job can generate ten applications? But if you put fifteen pounds into performance, depending on what it is course you'd get a kind of no we can't do that you might get one application yeah it's it's a good question it's and it is a real challenge and as you've just said you hit the nail on the head the part of the reason why duration-based postings have worked so well for recruitment agencies over the years because the unit economics of it makes sense for them in the sense that it's they can buy particularly if you're buying in volume buy a large volume of, of job ads at an at a relatively low unit cost um and obviously the number of applications that you get through from a from a cost per application perspective that it works it works very well i think the challenge that we've seen in the last year or two in particular is the fact that our costs to um, acquire candidates have escalated quite significantly and it becomes a a challenge for myself and other people in this market who are who are running businesses like ours and you'll have spoken to a few of them i'm sure on the on, on this podcast it, it, it is a challenge to make sure that we we run our business effectively. So I guess there's probably a couple of reasons or things that kind of help us here in the sense that um, the benefit of having scale in terms of the job ads that are on our site is that an applicant who comes to our site doesn't just apply for that one job. There is a halo effect so they will apply for, for, for more jobs. So I guess the more engaging a, an experience we can give that candidate, the more likely they are to deliver more value to us business and then i guess in a way satisfy more of our customers yeah. 
So there's not necessarily a one-to-one relationship between a candidate coming to the site and that job they're applying for, because they will apply for multiple. And some of those might come through our site to our site through paid channels, whether that be aggregators or paid search. But some of them will, once they've used our site, we obviously have a, a, an ecosystem of services, CRM pet campaigns, for example, where we can get them back into our into our experience and apply for jobs, which you know, it might be that one job they're looking for. And again, if we can get them back in, they might apply for multiple to multiple. So I guess there's different tactics that we need to make sure that we employ to try and maximize the value of every candidate who comes to our site, whilst also making sure that we give them the best experience we can. So they find ultimately the job that they've come onto our site to, to discover. It's quite difficult, isn't it? Because, you know, with a job board, you're dealing with people that are looking at, you know, generally actively looking for, for, for jobs. And I'm, I'm a bit of an, uh, you know, an advocate for the, the active job seeker over the passive job seeker. And, you know, I think the passive job seeker was, was lauded as normally so, someone more qualified than an active job seeker. Um, but of course, you will attract active job seekers. They'll come onto your platform. They'll apply for one or 10 jobs. They'll get a job and then probably disappear until they're active again. Um, you know, versus something like, um, you know, like a retail site that they can be tempted to come back and buy something else and buy something else, you, you know, so that must be, do you see a return of people after two years or, 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 or you know, it must be quite frustrating because you're constantly trying to bring new candidates to the site, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I guess it's a, it's an interesting um, dynamic whereby success for businesses like ours is the fact that someone comes along and they don't necessarily come back again for a while. Whereas as you're right, if it's a retail experience, you want them to come, keep coming into, come to the website or come into the shop as regularly as they can. But yeah, we do, we do see that. So it, it, it is certainly cyclical. And I think obviously tenure in jobs is different based on what market sector you're in, the level of seniority and so on. But yeah, we, we, we certainly see a, a cyclical nature in the sense that we will see a flurry of activity from a candidate um, very quickly when they register. And then we'll see that tail off over a period of time and maybe two or three years later, they'll, they'll, they'll re-engage with our service again. But I guess, so yeah, it, it is an interesting challenge for us for sure. And I think the the nature of an organization or site like ours is that you're right, the, the active audience to the ones who are most likely to come to our come to our service because they have a reason to they're looking for their next role i think where we not differ but i think one of our kind of points of differentiation maybe is that because we have a very successful courses proposition on our website as well we have another reason for users to engage with us so they, it's not a what we're trying to build is a more strategic relationship with our users rather than a transactional one so they're not just coming to read.co.uk to look for their next job they might they might be a a sort of junior hr person they might come to our website to engage with our service to apply for a job but then they could also go and consume cipd courses or other hr courses through our site as well yeah. so that's another way that we want to try and keep them engaged with our service so that when the next opportunity for them comes up then we're the first one they come to yeah and i think you know again you know it could be two three years five years whatever until you're looking for another role and and then i suppose that's when the mark some of the marketing also comes back because they may have completely forgotten you know which site did i go to can't remember um and then it, it's a you know it's a, it's a race to to see if, you know which job board they're kind of they reach first and then look for those jobs. oh yeah yeah it was read and then go you know kind of go back to go back to that um just jumping back to the performance side of things for a minute do you you know away from read you know, five, 10 years time, do, do you see the whole market ultimately becoming performance led? I think there's a, in, if we're looking 10 years into the future, I think there's a high likelihood that things will be performance led The majority in the majority. I guess what that looks like is maybe up for grabs. I think the, we've seen an evolution in this particular space in the last few years in the sense that we, we, when we've started selling a performance-based service, have been largely focused on cost per application clicks. So rather than just 
So essentially, we're trying to move slightly further down the the funnel than just a, a click or a view of a job. So we've kind of taken a strategic approach to focus more around higher levels of intent. We do have some customers where we have integrations with ATSs that we look at completed application, for example. So I think what we'll probably see is the the a, a change in where that point of um, monetization is because obviously the higher the further down the funnel it is the higher level of intent arguably the the unit cost increases i mean the ultimate pay for performance model is a recruitment agency isn't it yeah um and that's the reason they charge there so i think we'll see some changes there i think also the way that things are packaged will change in the sense that there are if you have confidence around the number of applications that you're likely to deliver in a certain sector location salary range there is a way of marketing a performance service like you would a tenancy model. It would it could be X amount per unit, but our but the likelihood will deliver you a Y number of applications alongside it. So I think probably there'll be an evolution there. And I think that was where data comes into it. The more data that we have as a provider of this service, um, over time, the more confidence we can have to say, actually this is this this is the outcome that you're going to get. Yeah. So I think that's probably a way in which the more confidence we have and the market gets in terms of the likelihood that you can do, you can deliver the desired outcome. I think the more likely it is that more customers will purchase in that way. But I think, I think there's probably one thing here, which is, which is really important. I think performance based models work when you are able to deliver performance. That sounds like an obvious statement, but there's a real difference between charging per application click and developing your service to maximize the number of application clicks you drive. So, or you could just take a tenancy model and just change the way that you charge for it. Still, you're ultimately still getting the same outcome. You're just charging someone differently. Yeah. But actually what customers want when they buy a performance-based service is they want to understand what the what the cost of it is they want to understand how quickly you can deliver them and they want the ability to up up weight down weight that campaign so i think that's where something like relevance comes in because you know you don't want to just deliver lots of applications you want to be delivering to the customer good quality applications at the price that they're willing to pay for them and that's where you'll get repeat business come through so i think there's a level of sophistication that will build uh, over time in this model to make more customers um comfortable buying in that way yeah i think i did a um a webinar earlier in the week and we talked about quality uh application quality um, which is very subjective but i think we kind of got to the point that actually um, a good quality candidate is is someone that you can do something with um whether or not it's for the particular role you're recruiting for or for a, a role in the in the future and the the general um, uh, feedback that I get from clients actually is that they're not really bothered how they pay for, for, to be supplied with candidates. They just want to make sure that they're decent candidates. And that's what gets people nervous. And I think your point about the, the, the data is really important because they get nervous when they get lots of applications and they're paying per application and all of them are, you know, not even you know, of the quality to, to talk to. I think that's the, that's the real challenge. And I think if any job board does that, or well, then they were, it won't, no one will bothered how, how they charge. No, exactly. And we, we, I'm going back five or six years ago. Now we spoke to a number of customers at that point, when we first started discussing whether we develop a proposition in this market, and that was the single biggest concern they had was that even if you de-risk it by saying that rather than paying to post the job and 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 sort of hoping to use your terminology at the outset, kind of keeping your fingers crossed that people will apply to it, um, even if you de-risk it by saying you only pay for what you get, um, their question absolutely, and even at, those, uh, at that point was, well, how can you guarantee that there'll be ones that I'll be willing to pay for? And that still stands up now. That hasn't necessarily changed. But I think that's that's as you said that's that's a point around data. That's a point around being able to case study. That's the point around obviously giving customers confidence that what you're trying to do in terms of the way that you've built the proposition gives them the best possible chance of success. Because ultimately, if you deliver, if as a supplier of performance based model, if you deliver a huge number of applications for a job but none of them are desirable, that customer won't come back to you again. 
Yeah. And talking about customers, talking about clients, and I don't know if this is if, if this will if, if this is related or not. But when you talk to candidates that apply for job on job boards, they'll have one story which will basically be I applied for X number of jobs and I didn't hear back from yep. most of them at all. Um, when you talk to recruiters, they will say that they've had X number of applications for a job um, and they contacted them and they ghosted them and, and never, never heard back. And I think what's happened is it's been made very easy for candidates to apply for jobs and it's been made very easy for recruiters to advertise for jobs. And so you end up with this kind of volume basis on both sides. And that particular experience isn't very good. Um, you know, that's not a, a job board issue or problem. It's a, a, a kind of a recruitment problem. Um, but additionally, one of the, the, the queries around performance has been the redirect and redirect and redirect to, to, to a site that then tells you the job's been taken down. Um, so that's made the candidate experience even worse. Um, is is a performance-based model, I mean, is that going to solve this thing of advertising loads of jobs and or candidates applying for loads of jobs and everyone ultimately being a bit disappointed because no one's calling each other back? Maybe everyone should just phone everybody else back and there wouldn't be a problem, wouldn't they? Candidates and, and, and recruiters. But is will this help with that? Um, yeah, I think you raise a really good point because... It, Pretty much every year that I've been in this business, so I've been with Read.co.uk for 12 and a half years now, whenever we run our surveys with candidates to say, what's your biggest frustration? You're absolutely right. They say we never hear back from people. And it, it is interesting how uh, this ghosting point seems to have increased in the last couple of years from our customers as well. I think it's a really good point. There is a real danger that the easier you make it to post and the easier that you make it to post to multiple sites at the same time the more opportunity there is for this problem to exist. We've tried to solve that in one way by actively increasing our ability to remove content from our site, particularly for camp for performance-based customers. So that at, at the moment that that job no longer becomes live or where that budget has been exhausted, the job comes down. Mm. So what we're not doing at that particular point is continuing to have um, can content on our website that doesn't benefit us or doesn't benefit the customer, but actually that the the candidate no longer needs to interact with. So it's a it's a tr problem that we've we've actively tried to resolve. So rather than a, a job continuing its lifespan on read.co.uk, once it has achieved its goal, um, yeah, we we've tried to develop the service in such a way that that that, that comes down, which we hope will minimise the chance of that candidate, as you say, potentially being bounced around with a job not existing or actually the the candidate and the customer being dissatisfied. So yeah, it, it, it's a problem that we've actively tried to lean into with this. And actually that's another tick in the box for performance, isn't it? Because if you advertise a, a 10 year based job, that's live for 40 days or 30 days or however long it is. After 10 days, the recruiter might have filled that role um and you're still but doesn't take it down because you know you still would like to place other people but but then it it becomes harder then and maybe that's um that's something that happens as, as well. yeah no i think you're right that, that there's definitely a uh, a benefit to performance based service whereby as you say it, it's it's more live you know it, 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 there is there is a there is it is actively in the recruiter's benefit for that job to expire at the point that they need it to I think yeah. Ho hopefully, there, there's a benefit for that. There. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's intro. I hadn't can thought of that one before, so that's quite interesting. Uh, we are sort of rapidly heading towards the uh, the end of uh, of this uh, podcast. So, um, but we always have our um, the food related question, which is um, I think the most popular part of all the podcasts. Um, uh, so you're you're eating. Um, you're entertaining, you're taking people out or you're cooking something in, whatever it is. Um, you want to show them a good time. Are you cooking or are you going out? That's the first question. 
Yeah, really good question. So uh, I, 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 I love cooking. I really enjoy oh. cooking. I find it, I find it quite a, uh, uh, a good opportunity to kind of de-stress at the end of the day. So yeah, I definitely have people around. I think. Fantastic. Right. Okay. So we got people coming around. You're putting on um, your signature dish. What is it? So I've got, I've got two. And it depends on, it depends on the weather. The reason I say that is that if it's a bit miserable like it is today, um, I've, I've perfected, I think, a, a slow roasted leg of lamb. Um, really, really nice. Falls apart on the bone. Um, mashed potato, pre lentils. It's a really good dish. However, my wife bought me a pizza oven uh, last oh. year. Um, so I've I've got into I became rather obsessed with perfecting uh, uh, wood fired pizzas at home. So I think that's 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 kind of become a bit more of my my meal of choice. Fantastic! A pizza oven is always not too far away from my shopping list of things to to get. I, I seem to sort of manage to put myself um, talk myself out of it, or my family talk talk me out of it. But uh, the idea of that is is quite um quite appealing so okay well let's not leave it there the toppings on the pizza i've come around for a so, sort of special what is yeah. it what's on it so i have to i've had to kind of work on two so my daughter's a vegetarian so i do i do one which is a, a roasted vegetable one which works really well uh, and the other is a quite a basic like italian meats uh rocket and parmesan after it's been cooked so they're 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 the, they're, the, they're the ones that work best that that sounds good. Well, if the performance stuff at Reed doesn't actually work out, then you know clearly you've got an, a a talent for uh, Wingate's pizzas. I think I think that's uh... sounds good. <laughs> have you have, now? Have you taken any into the team? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, we did have a competition a year or so ago. I happened to be making one, so I put a, I put a I, I put a competitive post out on Slack to say uh, anyone fancy competing with me over the weekend. That a couple of the guys on the team did and. Uh, they, theirs look pretty good, but uh, no, I haven't taken any in yet. Maybe that, maybe that's something I need to do in the next. Few months. I think, I think, as the sun comes out, you might have to, uh, you might have to do that. So, brilliant! That was, that was, that was great. That was um, really some really, really useful stuff there. And you know, I know obviously Reed have, have kind of uh, launched that into, uh, you know, launched that service uh, with what you do. So you know, that's that. That's great, but actually, on a wider point of view, around what's happening in the market from a performance and, and duration point of view, I think would be really, really useful. Hopefully, people listening or viewing, watching, found that found that interesting. But thank you, Simon. It was uh, brilliant to have you uh, to have you on. Um, and you know, I'm looking forward to getting a pizza um, in the post at some point as as well. So, but no, thank you very much for for coming on. No, thanks for having me. Enjoyed it. You're more more than welcome. Um, so thank you everyone else too uh, that that has been been watching, listening. Um, if you like it, then please do share, comment, tell tell us what you think. Um, although tell us the nice stuff first, please, uh, to keep our morale high. Um, but other than that, um, have a good rest of the week, a good rest of the month, um, and do come back again soon. Thank you very much. Bye everyone.